me, I liked it because he was just trying to protect her. He's like, no, I'm not leaving her with this crazy man. Yeah. Why? You had a problem with that? I do. I do have a problem with it. What? I actually have two. My my main two flaws in this episode are in this scene. I have two flaws. This is the inaugural episode review of the Midnight Release channel. As you can see, my wife is here with us instead of our normal co-host, which you have not seen yet, which is my brother. But as he is lame and doesn't watch Better Call Saul, I have to have my wife. It's not. I, it's not his time yet. It's not his time to watch it. And that's <laughs> fine. But he'll come to love it. Um, but yeah, we're doing season six, episode eight, point and shoot. This is the second half of the Better Call Saul uh, finale, and we're gonna be do, finishing out the rest of the show. So, without further ado, let's get right into it. So, just to give a little background on us, Breaking Bad is my favorite show of all time. I think it's pure art and cinema, to be honest. <laughs> and um, Better Call Saul does not dilute Breaking Bad in any way, uh, for those who don't know. And we are getting started with a banger here in the, in the last finale, which is what I expected. I told you this. Yeah. I said, um, I think the flow of these last six episodes, I believe, right? Six? Yeah, yeah, I think I, so. Yeah, the last six, I felt like we're going to follow Breaking Bad pretty closely. Um, because they've both... Even though Better Call Saul has one more season than Breaking Bad does, I just felt like they were going to follow the same arc as Breaking Bad does. Which they've kind of done. Um, in Breaking Bad, they, they ended that second... The first half of the last season with Hank's death... Sorry. Hank's um, realization that Walt is Heisenberg... And then in this one, we saw Howard die in the last episode. And now we're seeing it immediately start running. And with Breaking Bad, it was just a constant um, speed run of just excitement. And that's what we've gotten here with Point and Shoot, episode 8. Uh, what, are you, what are you feeling so far on, on this episode? And this episode, I was just not expecting to be how it was. But, I mean, like what you're saying comparing to Breaking Bad... And how that ran through makes sense. But when I was going into it, I was I just thought it would not be as fast paced. You yeah. know? Very stressful. But very good. Yes. I I, I no. no um good. with so we just finished watching Game of Thrones, which is <laughs> godlike, I'll say. Um one of <laughs> one of the biggest things of Game of Thrones that is so solid is the fact that every time an episode ends with something good, it always starts with that storyline on the next episode, and they, they don't always conclude it, but they make you feel good that you waited for that next episode. And I will say, I don't feel like Better Call Saul has that track record. Uh, I feel like there's a lot of times where I'm waiting for something for the good thing to come. But this one got right into the action. Right into it. So, if, yeah, so this is... Sorry. We're also, I'm also going to mention how this is going to be formatted, as this is our non-spoiler first half um, show and review, and then we'll also be having a spoiler second half, and that will we will give getting into the get details. more into the details. So we're not going to go into any details here, um, and this is how, the way every review will go. <clears throat> so, yeah, if you watched that last episode, it literally picks up where it left off, yep. and it keeps going. And as soon, sorry, it doesn't immediately. It starts with the opening. Um, scene that's not um, which we'll get into later but right after that it starts off and it just keeps going you don't it never wavers which is great and one thing about the episode two that I just love about Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul is how the plot is in every episode like I don't expect it or I don't predict it easily it's just well thought out I'm like that is just so clever mm. and that's how I felt in this episode I felt in certain things that we'll talk about in the Spoiler part, but yeah. Mm. Um, so, so right after the sh the episode ended, give me your immediate thoughts. Without spoiling. Dang. <laughs> dang. Just dang. <laughs> like that. What? That's how. Like, how do you say? It? I don't know. I just felt like seriously it ended. I'm like, that happened. Okay. Like it just happened fast. That whole episode. I felt like it wasn't 40 minutes. It's usual 40 minutes or an yes, hour. Yes. How long is it? Yeah. But 
like it felt like I watched a 30 minute episode. I'm like, oh my gosh, what just happened? And I think I had to think about every part and like scene in the episode mm. to like for it to really hit me again. I'm like, wow, that was crazy. Yeah. The the one knock I have on Better Call Saul compared to Breaking Bad is um, I do feel like Better, Break, Better Call Saul, um, Thomas Schnauss, I believe is his name, or Peter Gould, one of those. He is now the co-writer and director with Vince Gilligan, while Breaking Bad, Vince Gilligan was the creator and he was the sole uh, person. And I feel like with the new... Um, new director and writer, I feel like this show has been a little bit more visually appealing um, and more realistic in a, in a way. Um, and let me explain. I feel like Breaking Bad had a lot more highs and they didn't, they weren't as in tune with trying to make every scene visually appealing and um, what's the word? Slow. There's a lot of slow moments in Better Call Saul. Right. And I feel like they do this for the fact of just kind of making it look pretty. You kind of see every little detail. Um, and I'm not sure if that's because they have a lack of story to tell. And right. they have to fill up the time. Or if that's just the way he likes his shows. Oh, maybe. Yeah. I don't know his work other than this. No. I but, feel like, too, also, like, Saul is Jimmy first. So I feel like it's more slow because he's not full out Saul like in Breaking Bad. So maybe it's kind of slow too in that kind of sense. It's just a whole setup of how he becomes Saul Goodman. You know what I mean? So I can see that being a factor as why there's like some slow parts in this. Yeah. In this show. Uh huh. And I was I was saying this because um, this episode was not that way. This episode felt oh. a little bit more like Breaking <laughs> Bad, where it was that a little bit more high adrenaline pushing through um and that and that felt good because there i'll be honest this last season um there's been like about four episodes three episodes in the middle of the last six the last half that were a little slow and i just felt like they didn't need to be so detailed on what they were doing that's my knock so far but this episode was not that way at all i did like the last episode though yeah last one was good i'm saying those three four okay. too slow I did, they didn't need to be there i felt like it didn't hmm. develop the characters enough I feel like in Breaking Bad, when they had, like, is it season two, when Walt is not cooking for, like, four episodes, I'm just, I wasn't that bored during those scenes. I feel like they were developing things. They were causing stress to accumulate. But in this show, I just feel like they just, it doesn't feel that way at times during the slow moments. Um, but yeah, this was not that way, which is awesome. <laughs> so, let's get straight into the review now. Um, here's our quick... Um, bio for it, I guess. So it picks up right where it left off and continues running in an authentic gangster style, ending mm -hmm. an enthralling storyline as we embark into the unknown. Take that with what you may. Try to foreshadow what you believe off that if you haven't seen the episode already. Um, but that is my best explanation for this episode. I like it. Yeah. Do you have anything to add to that? No, I think it's great. It's great, yeah. Can't so, say too much. Yeah. So Rotten Tomatoes, um, they have 13 critics who have reviewed it so far, and they have given it 100% up to this point, which I don't think is, I don't agree That's with. That's interesting. I don't think it's a perfect episode. Um, however, for Midnight Release, we give this episode a score of 92, and <clears throat> our, ent our entertainment factor was a 94%. Um... For to try to explain this a little bit, I believe if this episode was placed in the Breaking Bad universe, it would have been higher in both in both regards, as score and entertainment. Um, but we know how the things end for the most part with most of the characters, and we lose a lot of the excitement throughout it, as prequels just don't have the same oomph that a main story mm -hmm. show has. Agreed. <clears throat> yeah. So honestly, I could see this episode being a 95, 97, if this was in Breaking Bad, where every character is open to die. Yeah. But we just, most of the characters we know aren't going to die. Um, which really brings down the stress. And then entertainment, it, the entertainment was a little higher than I believe the episode was deserving of a score, which is why we gave it a 94 and 90, instead of 92, um, as it is just one of the more 
high adrenaline episodes that Better Call Saul has to offer. Yeah, because I don't think in that in this episode there was really a slow moment, was there? At mm-hmm. least not that I can recall. Well, technically slow, but not slow because you're interested what to say with that. Because it's all yeah. in the same yeah. like the same story. Like we line. didn't find it slow, right? But someone might, but true. Yeah, it wasn't like. Tahajali on Breaking Bad where it's just constant. No, it wasn't like that. Mm. Not every moment. But it was great for every Breaking Bad fan. So there's our review. Um, and this ends our non-spoiler half of the episode. If you want to watch the spoiler half after you've seen it or you want to go into it now, the video will...